Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole, and welcome to my long-term update on Metacube devices. I am so unbelievably excited for this video. This is one of those video ideas where I've known for a year and a half that I wanted to do this video. It's just a matter of when do you get there? When are you at a point where you feel you can talk about the long-term results of skincare products, skincare devices? And with Metacube, it's been a little tricky because I have been using the AJAR for a year and a half, and yet they released a series of four different devices over time, so it hasn't been as long with the most recent release, but it has been, I guess, almost a year. Almost a year with that one. So I do feel confident telling you how I feel about these now. I do want to say before we get into this video, I was fortunate to receive all of these from Medicube. I have done some sponsorships for a couple of these products. Today's video is unsponsored, and yet you're going to find that I do still think these are all good devices. It's just a matter of how much do I love each one of these at this point. Uh, I think I want to say something real briefly on sponsorships. It is very interesting to be on the other side of them. You know, I have been a, a YouTube viewer since the platform emerged, meaning I very much remember the time of undisclosed sponsorships too. Ooh, some of those companies got me. Had to do some of those good old chargebacks and everything. But in 2023, and especially on YouTube, where I think a lot of content creators here have experience at this point, we've, we've been through this, we have a lot of integrity, I would hope, in choosing sponsorships. I do want to say that, you know, when I get these negative comments about, well, she's just saying she likes it because it's a sponsorship, please know that we really don't have to take every sponsorship that comes our way, and I really hope content creators don't. I actually get a lot of sponsorship offers for devices, devices and silk pillowcases, and I turned down the vast majority of them. It was an honor for me to work with Medicube because I do believe in these devices, and I would say it really does speak for itself if you ever end up trying these. You can tell that they are high quality, you can see results from them. I think they are all very well made. But what I want to do in today's video is not just tell you how I feel about them at this point, but also hopefully help to narrow in on what each one of these four devices does. Because taken all together, this is over a thousand dollars worth of skincare devices, and I don't think every person necessarily needs every one of them. In fact, I'm going to tell you honestly, these are all still going strong for me, but if they all broke, I would repurchase three out of four of these, and I'll tell you why. And one more really important thing before we get into this video, I do want to say this is going to be a video about my own personal experiences for the most part. We've talked more about the science and the research behind these in past videos, but I still feel a responsibility to say, if you are interested in any of these, please check with your doctor first. I've had a few people comment about reasons why they're not able to use electronic devices. That is a very valid point. I don't think these are going to be for everybody. And checking with your doctor is just the smartest idea before you go and invest in any of these. If you are interested, you can use my 10% off code, rabbit hole, if you find this video helpful and you would like to help support the channel. Let's go ahead and get into these devices. As always, timestamps and links are in the description box below if you are only interested in one of these. So let's start out this video with the device that started it all, the HR EMS device. For each of these devices, I do want to have some keywords up on the screen to kind of help you narrow down what these do. So for the HR, those keywords are going to be targets muscles and skin elasticity. See, it's kind of interesting to me on the Medicube website, they talk about how this is kind of in the umbrella of microcurrent. But only kind of, because it is EMS, electrical muscle stimulation, which is typically at a higher amperage than microcurrent. Medicube says this device uses medium frequency, and also that it gives both immediate and long-term results. And listen, I have to say, and I almost never say this, but I do agree. 
I do believe this gives immediate results, and it'll make sense as to why as I explain this a little more. So if you do want to see microcurrent as a big umbrella of all of the different currents that are out there, then you would have to address that there is this microcurrent range, this EMS range, and then a nanocurrent range. I'm holding up the zip, which uses both nano and microcurrent. It's very interesting to have used both of these devices at this point. If you are familiar with the zip, it has some, as they call them, workouts that are specifically nanocurrent. And if you do those workouts, the uh, instructor on the screen says, you won't see results for two to three days because it is nanocurrent. And yes, that's true. I love my zip. I love the results I get in two to three days after using, but that lower amperage does mean slower results. Whereas on the complete other end of the spectrum, where I really don't think we have any devices that compare to this in the US, at least not to my knowledge, you have EMS. When you use the AHR, you cannot help but feel the stimulation on your muscles. You absolutely, you absolutely feel it. Your muscles will probably kind of jump around and twitch a little bit as you use it because it is a stronger amperage. And as I said way back, and I still agree with my past self to this day, I do feel that that makes this such an ideal device for larger muscles in your face. Think your jaw. But you may have also heard that in the microcurrent umbrella, another goal is to stimulate ATP production, energy. And if you are targeting energy production in your skin, then that could indeed help with skin elasticity, explaining how this is kind of a two-in-one, how it really could be a product for or a tool for both elasticity as well as targeting the muscles. Now, I want to make sure that I address people's concerns with these devices in this video as well. So one thing I've heard with specifically EMS is the question of can you overproduce ATP such that it becomes a problem in your skin. And I think it's important to keep in mind that any tool or device has instructions for how to use it, for how much to use it. And with this device, Medicube says to use this for no more than 10 minutes a day, two to three times a week. Now I'm gonna tell you a little more about my own anecdotal experience. <laughs> and before I tell you this, keep in mind that it's okay to use these devices less than instructed, but not more. The reason I love this so much is that while I love the zip and while I love the nanocurrent treatments that are 12 to 14 minutes that they say you can do two to three times if you would like, making a 30 minute session with this. I am a busy person. I don't know how people have time actually. I can, can I get some more hours in my weekend? I would love that. There is a hack for five minute crafts to figure out, figure out how to get us more hours in the day. Anyway, point being, I like this because I actually grab this and use this for mm, maybe one to two minutes, two to three times a week. And in the one to two minutes of using this device, the immediate results are exactly what I want. I personally really do feel I've actually seen muscle toning with this device. I cannot say that for other microcurrent devices, but again, this is EMS and I actually see it with very minimal usage. So I was on the Medicube website making some more notes for this video. I of course want to make sure I'm being accurate with these videos. And it's so funny, I was going to tell you all about how I use this. So let me just tell you that first. So I prefer to set this to long hold. So it changes to the up setting and then from there, maybe two, maybe three. And this is after a year and a half of playing around with this device, I've just discovered, oh, I prefer the up setting. Well, come to find out on the website, they actually say the slim setting is the one that is meant for skin elasticity and the up setting is the one that is made to target muscles. Well, now it makes sense that that is the one that I've defaulted to given that I like what it does for toning my jawline. Yeah, I absolutely love the up setting. <laughs> That can be taken out of context, can't it? I love Up, N not the movie though, it makes me cry every time. Long story short, this is absolutely one of my favorites because I like what it does for my jawline and I don't always have a lot of time, especially in the mornings, but I can always find one to two minutes a couple times a week and see results with this device. 
I am really excited to talk about the next device, which is the Medicube Ucera device. But I do have to start this conversation by saying, this is the one I was most scared of using. This device uses radio frequency and ultrasound with the goal of collagen and elastin stimulation. But you are watching a skincare channel, I feel like you've probably heard about the, the side effects that can apparently happen with radio frequency, and I feel like what's scariest about it is that it kind of does make sense. And it's kind of similar to what we've talked about with microneedling, where you're doing controlled damage. That heat makes your body go, oh gosh, we are, we are experiencing severe temperatures. We're gonna lose all our collagen. We better start making more collagen. We gotta start making more elastin. But shh, don't tell your skin. It didn't actually cause any damage. You just get more collagen and elastin out of it. Win-win. Unless, unless, that radio frequency goes a little bit deeper into the fat layers in your skin where it could melt them. <gasps> Nobody wants to lose fat in their face. Although I guess, I guess that was some kind of a, a, a strange trend that happened. I don't want to talk about it. That's, that's odd to me, right? That's odd. Why would anybody want to remove fat from your face? But I'm glad I overcame my fears because I now absolutely love this device as well. It's like we were talking about with the EMS device, it's important to not overdo it. And I do think that there's a big distinction between a home device and a professional device. Home devices are typically, and always should be, designed with a margin of human error in mind, meaning what if somebody overuses the device? Well, it's okay, we made it a little bit more of a gentle device to start with. Whereas a professional radio frequency machine is in the hands of hopefully a professional who knows what they're doing and isn't going to make mistakes. Yet there is human error. I can tell you all about my story of how when I was 18 years old, a terrible oral surgeon really messed up my teeth, but that's neither here nor there. But you know, you gotta hope these professional tools are in professional hands. And I think that, I, I do think that's the difference. I don't think this is as strong as a clinical radio frequency device. Because again, as I've already said, I'm so glad I started using this, I overcame my fears, and I feel like this little device has done so much specifically for this area of my face. I was starting to get smile lines because I can never stop laughing at life, it's so funny. It's so funny. Dang, this little device is so good for targeting this area, and that's what I'd heard. I'd heard radio frequency is great for that. So again, in anecdotal experiences, this thing targets lines honestly better than any microcurrent device that I've tried. This is amazing for that purpose. Um, I do wanna tell you about how I use it. So I've discovered that I can use this on the full setting. Let me go ahead and turn it on. So all the way up to five, and then you just hit this, and you move along no more than 80 times two to three times a week. So I can use level five all over my entire face, actually. However, I do go back in and set it to usually two or maybe three, and then that's what I will use on my neck. And of course, all of these you do need to use with a gel. Medicube's gel is great and it's not too expensive. I really appreciate that. Some of these companies, they get you in their gels. Medicube's is not too expensive. So yes, this is another device where if it broke, and it, it still hasn't, I would repurchase this, but I would get the, the new pink ones. Have you seen their millennial pink varieties of these? Ugh, so appealing as I sit here in a pink wig. And that brings us to the last two devices. Now I'm gonna kind of talk about these as two sides of the same coin, because truth be told, that's what I think. I think they're two sides of the same coin. So spoiler with these, I would repurchase one of these, yes. One, I think they're both good devices, but I would only repurchase one. Let's go ahead and start with the ATS AirShot device. This one is made to mimic the effects of microneedling and to target pores. That makes this really quite different from the other devices. This is the only one where, in contrast to using gels or with this one, any skincare that you want, with this one you wanna use this on bare skin. Medicube does not tell us a lot about how these work, but I do believe that both of them are electroporation. According to Medicube, the air shot is using high voltage. 
And I would say that makes sense in terms of what they're trying to accomplish with this. They are trying to accomplish a one-time buy that mimics microneedling. Now, I like microneedling. I talk about it maybe not that much on this channel. Actually, let me admit to you that my fear with talking about microneedling, I do believe in it. There's a lot of research to support it. I've seen great results from microneedling, but it's always scary to think that I could be over here saying, yeah, microneedling is great. Make sure you do it safely. I don't know that everyone is doing it safely. Could I be, you know, inadvertently convincing people to buy a derma roller, which I definitely do not recommend, but that is a cheap way of doing microneedling. Oh, I would not recommend a derma roller. I think it is way too high risk. And I think that there are more minimal risk options available, and that's what I use these days. But this is something that I really respect in the Airshot, is that this is the safest way to get something similar to microneedling. Because no matter what, when you are talking about needles that you cannot sterilize, there is always a risk, whereas the Airshot is using electricity, high voltage electricity. It makes sense, doesn't it? And I do suspect that that idea of this being high voltage, almost kind of shocks into your skin, perfectly explains why they would say that this helps with product absorption, anything you apply after you use this, as well as pore size. It does make logical sense that that approach would minimize the appearance of pores. However, there's a few things I have to say with this device. I am going to tell you honestly, this is the least comfortable to use out of all four devices, and I think that makes perfect sense if they're going for something that is replicating microneedling. It's not super comfortable to poke your skin with tiny needles, and this is therefore the least comfortable device. And I think the biggest criticism that this device has faced is people saying, how is it microneedling? So I think it is really important to bear in mind that this is designed to be an alternative to microneedling. How similar it is directly to microneedling is hard to say. Meaning I'm not sure that you can take that high voltage electricity and say, okay, this is exactly like using X size of microneedling. I, I just, I don't think it translates perfectly, but I do think that it was a brilliant idea. I think it was a brilliant idea because of all the risks associated with, in particular, at-home microneedling. So I respect this. I think it's a great option, especially for people who are looking to improve product absorption or increase product absorption and improve the appearance of pores. Meaning that I think that this is probably going to be more appealing for people with oily skin. Dry skin types like myself, we just typically don't have the same concerns with pores. It has to do with sebum production. We aren't creating as much sebum in our skin, and so our pores just tend to be a little smaller. And so because of that and the fact that honestly also, I don't like using this on dry skin. It is uncomfortable for me as someone with dry skin. You know, I finish washing my face and I immediately spray my face with toner, immediately, because I hate that period of time after cleansing and before toning, it is so uncomfortable. So it is uncomfortable for me to come in with another device and sit there with dry skin, right? So yes, in all truth, this is my least favorite. I don't think I would repurchase this, but I still fully respect it. I think it is a great option. Option, just probably for the opposite skin type of mine. But we've got one more device to talk about, and that is the Glow Booster. This was the last that Medicube released. And as such, I must say, what happened is I liked this, and then this came along, and I said, relationship ended with Airshot. Glow Boost is my new favorite. And yes, this one too is pretty different from the AHR and the USERA devices. You don't need the gel with this. Instead, what you do with this one is you apply any skincare product that you want and you follow with this because the purpose of this, Medicube actually says that this one is an electroporation device meant to increase the rate of absorption of your skincare products. I've had so many like-minded conversations with this. I guess 
We, we must be club peptides over here. I love peptides, it seems a lot of you do too. And a lot of you have said, yes, I use the Glow Booster after using my peptide products because as we've discussed with peptides, a lot of the problem is how do we know they're getting into the skin? Now it's not to say that this eliminates that question, but that's the, that's the goal of this device. Now Medicube also says that this enhances glow in your skin, and I absolutely believe it does. Is that not a perfect description of what dry skin people want? And given that I have a lot of experience with other devices, I do have to admit that what this feels like to use is the most like microcurrent which perplexes me, there, there must be something very different going on with this device and it's one probe versus our, our two probe microcurrent devices and yet that is what it feels like. This one also has some really big contrast to all the other devices, one being that it's really comfortable to use this. This is relaxing to use, a big contrast from this, more in line with the AHR, but the AHR is still, I, I'd say, Especially the first few times you use this, it's jarring how much it moves your muscles. Whereas this one also feels like it does move your muscles, but it's in such a, a calming way. It's, it's very difficult for me to even understand my own mind on this one, much less to explain it. But yes, this is very enjoyable to use. And again, you can use this with anything. Serums, moisturizers, you can use this over sheet masks for a real pampering session. It's a very versatile tool, and one that I wish I understood what was going on a little more. However, I must say, it is a must-have for me, and it is one that I would repurchase. So my friends, that's it for my Medicube devices updates. I hope I kept this video short, concise, and helpful. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you are interested in one of these, again, feel free to use code RABBITHOLE for an extra 10% off your order. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.